All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. For those who are not there with us from the beginning, we say thank you uh, because uh, the conversation never ends. We still get better, better things for Una. We just uh, finished conversation with um, uh, the chairman of uh, Dixlesia Nigeria. I talk about uh, Mr. Ben uh, Aripo. And we talk about the, 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 the Dyslexia Foundation. And we talk about how uh, Dyslexia take be and how people suppose they understand them and uh, follow up on that matter. We still get another conversation via Skype now. We speak to uh, Mr. Godwin Tom. Now, artist uh, management consultant, and we want to discuss this whole situation between artists and record labels. You know, this has been a conversation for quite some time, and we said, okay, let's have someone who is an expert in this field and who can give us uh, the clear insight on the matter. You're yeah, welcome on the show, Mr. Godwin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All Thank right, you for joining welcome. us. Good morning. Uh, myself and Olive, we're going to be uh, having this conversation with you, and um, let's even let's even you know understand this situation once and for all. We're talking about uh, artists and record labels. And this is a serious issue because we see this happen every time. Social media is always carrying the news. There's always one artist against one record label or one record label suing the artist for not meeting up to expectation. So there's a lot about, in, there's a lot going on in this conversation. So let's even start from uh, this part of the conversation. Does how is it how necessary is it for an artist to have a manager i want to start from there how necessary is it for an artist to have a manager and the, there are lots of managers i would say so let's start from how necessary it is to, for an artist to have a manager first before we go into the other conversation um it is for an artist who has long-term uh goals it's very important mm. right because even if you sign a record deal you need someone to protect your interest Okay. So the manager's job is, as far as the label is concerned, is to protect the interest of the artist. So mm -hmm. ensuring that the label keeps to their contract terms, ensuring that the label does what they say they will do. Yes. They don't cheat the artist. Uh, um, so it's very you need someone to fight in your corner because your job as an artist is to make music. There has to be somebody protecting your interest. So it's essential. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe that this manager we're talking about is not the manager provided by the record label, but is the manager that the artist brings into the contract with the record label, if I'm correct? Yes, so basically, when a manager works for the label, the loyalties lie with the label. With the label. And if your loyalties lie with the label, you can't protect the interest of the artist, because you, you protect the interest of the label. Hmm. Oh, I see. So let's talk about choosing a, a manager, because Apparently, it's like a marriage. You know, who you, who you choose to work with you on this career path determines how far or how long and how sustainable your art will be. So what are some of the things that you'd advise when choosing a manager to work with? Is it in terms of how long you've known the person, how well the person knows the industry? What are some of the things that the artist should take into consideration when deciding who should be his or her manager? Uh, the two things you mentioned are important. The person's experience is, is valuable. Um, nobody wants to work with a manager that does not have a career. So because your career, having a career means you have a network, you have experience, um, and those are useful. I wouldn't say so much about knowing somebody for a long time, because knowing someone doesn't mean that they know the job. True. Um, when you, when you, the focus is for you and the artist as a manager to be clear about what your role is. I think most of the times there have been issues between artists and their managers, it's mainly because roles have been blurred. So nobody really knows what the, their job is. So the manager sometimes behaves like a PA, you're not sure, does yeah. PR, you're not sure. Yeah. I mean, there are times when those things are required, but if it's not clear, what the role is, lines become blurred. So when you tell the artist that you, oh, you can't do that, they get upset because you didn't clarify it. So I think clarity is extremely important in the relationship. And when you guys start feeling like there is a confusion in your role, even when it helps when you're leaving the, the, the job, because if both of you know, understand that, okay, this is the situation, we are not happy with the way things are going, we can both move on and we don't need to throw, throw a fight on Twitter. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, um, because there's this whole conversation about m managers and artists. The reason why we brought this up because we're leading to the record label aspect and the artist uh, signing on deals and all that. But the manager is usually very essential in this process. Now, some of them will say, ah, the, to, to, get, to choose a manager, you need someone we will believe in you. Guy will know, say, your, your, your talent, they okay. Someone that can root for you wherever he is if you're if, about, about your talent. Is that really necessary? Or is it getting someone who just understands the game and see where they can fit you in as an artist? Must the, must the manager just, believe in the artist first? That's yes. Okay. You, can't, you can't sell what you don't believe in. Hmm. So um, that's given. You need someone with experience, mm -hmm. but you also need someone who has experience and likes your music. Also, experience with your music plays a very important role as well. Somebody who is dealing in environments that are conducive for a soul artist will have a difficult time engaging in Afropop. So those are things to... Okay. okay. So let, you're talking about role assignments and uh, where the assignments and the rules are not clearly spelled out, there be, that be, it will become blood. It could become blood at some point. What are the fundamental roles of the management, the manager for the artist, and then the record label? So usually where there is, uh, where there is a contract about to be created, or if someone had approached me and said, I'd like you to manage me, what are the things I should expect that I would do? So I'm basically asking you two roles, role of a manager, role of the record label. We already know that the role of the artist is to create music, and these people are the ones that determine how your craft is being navigated through the market. So what are the roles of the manager and the roles of the record label? So the role of the manager has changed over time. Uh, before, if you find a label for your artist, you're a successful manager. Um, that's not the case anymore with the internet and people being able to do things independently. Um, the role of the manager has shifted to business development. So now your role is to create or identify opportunity and generate revenue from those opportunities. Uh, that's the role of the manager now. The role of the label is to create, is to help the artist create content or music and distribute for sale. Um, that role is also changing because the, the labels are now providing 360 contracts where they're saying, look, we benefit from everything you do because we've created the opportunity for you to be successful to do those things. Mm. So um, the, the labels now uh, ask for, it, they have like, like total uh, uh, control over the, the, the talent as it, as it is, whichever part of uh, the music you're, you're trying to push out. Now, uh, I, have, I have another question. Uh, for a manager, um, can the manager d determine the, the song you put out? Can the manager have a say in the, the actual, or in choosing the songs you put out, or in choosing what part of your craft you should sell? Is, can that be done by a manager also? Sometimes, yes. Um, the manager can give advice. However, I always advise managers to work with a and ANR is a term called artist and repertoire. The, this person is the one who is responsible for the creative process of creating music. The manager is responsible for the business process of selling the music. Okay. So when, when you have somebody who understands the creative part, they can guide the art and help determine what stuff to put out. Most times we have it here in Nigeria where, well, I mean globally, where the manager thinks he's an ANR and the A&R thinks he's a manager, and then you wreck the career of the artist because you're playing roles that you should be playing. Yeah. I mean, okay, let's talk about the fights and the dirty fights that make it to Twitter, Instagram, and all the social media platforms. We mm -hmm. see that happen every now and then. We've seen artists not being able to recover after the dirty fights they had with their record label. Let's try to avoid these dirty fights and uh, lay, with us, lay down some of the precedents that the artists must take into consideration when signing an agreement with a record label. Because we see, we are the consumers of this music and we see it from the outside and we see all the fights, but we know that there's a dip, there are roots that are deeper than what we see on the surface. So what are some of the things that, that are pertinent to every contract or every agreement that an artist is going into with a record label? Um, well, I mean, it sometimes is a personal issue because the, the fights we have are with people breaching contracts. 
Um, so usually I tell artists, you know, I know that your parents and your family and your friends love, but if they don't understand the business, you need to you need to see through the information they give you. Um, one of the challenges that we have is that artists don't put into consideration the cost of running a label of their own. So you're assigned to a label, they're covering your housing costs, they pay for your car, they pay for your DSTV, they pay for your internet, uh, they pay for your local transportation, just basic costs that you don't consider that add up. So you then tell the label, maybe you're making 2 million per show, 3 million per show, and you tell the label, you don't want to do this anymore. And then you go on your own and realize that you don't actually know different integrity and the processes of marketing your music, plugging your content, uh, building relationships, all those things. And then you begin to fail and you think the label is sabotaging you. So I always advise if you decide you want to go on your own, be clear about what role you're playing and what cost you have. The second issue I find is that most people who sign their contract sign in desperation. And when you do that, I mean, it happens. Some people see situations that they've been praying for for their life, and no lawyer is going to stop them from taking it. But I think the more popular you become, you can now begin to view your terms. I know some artists that reviewed their contract term twice before they left, and when they left, it was peaceful. So those are things to consider. Don't get carried away with what people are saying and people gassing you on social media. Try to ensure that you understand your terms. A lot of times the labels are actually, are actually fair. If they had to persecute artists to the extent of breach of the contract, some artists wouldn't have a career after those sessions, after those situations. So, so looking at, uh, at and like you said, most times the, the labels are actually fair. Uh, if we look at some of the uh, situations that have happened so far, we could do lots of artists who uh, had issues with their record labels, and some of them were st would try to remain relevant in the industry, while a couple of them just went, um, they just disappeared off the music scene due to some, you know, um, breach of contract. And usually, people like like uh, my uh, like Olive said, people on the outside will just see it as ah, the record label, they are wicked, they didn't you know uh, understand that this person is big, and, and there've been a conversations on how much the artists make compared to how mm. much work they put in. You understand? Mm. There's there's an argument that if the artist didn't have the talent, the the um, the, the, the re revenue that comes in afterwards wouldn't be made possible. So would you say that, uh, is it safe to say that without the artist also, the record labels would not be able to make such amount of money they're making, you know, even if they've invested in the artist? If the artist wasn't good enough, would they be able to make that money that they're, they're, they're making? I think that's why the artists come out and say, hey, I can work alone without the record label if I am this good or if I am this big. So what do you have to say about this? Um, well, every good artist knows that talent is one part of the entire equation. Um, and if you understand business properly, you will know that you need business people on your side for you to make the most of your talent. Mm -hmm. So yes, we the entire business revolves around the talent. But you, as a talent, you need people to have an understanding of the process and how to find and opportunities for you on your side. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can start your own business, but also when you start the business, make sure you have the right people around. Um, there, there's no need to jeopardize the opportunity that you could use your talent to help yourself because to a point that you need people. Mm -hmm. Nobody is an island. Now, uh, the reason why I asked that, we had a recent situation between uh, Cynthia Morgan. I think that was the, was the most recent one that has been going around with Cynthia Morgan and Jude. And uh, a lot of people would, uh, Cynthia Morgan came out with a video, Jude came out with a video. So it was a back and forth conversation with on hearsay. I said this, you said that, we didn't say this, we didn't say that. Usually, the artists would say they were hidden clauses in the contract that they didn't understand, but they signed to. But the record label will tell you that we gave you a contract. It was uh, it was your responsibility to read through and understand. So, 
in the case of signing agreements and contracts and things like that, where would you, who would you say is to blame when it comes out in this uh, kind of way? Sometimes the artist will say the, the contract stated this, but there were hidden clauses in the contract that didn't clearly uh, explain what it meant. So who would you say is usually at fault when it comes to situations like this? I mean, from on different occasions, the labels have been uh, the cause at fault. Uh, sometimes the art has been at fault. Uh, in Cynthia Morgan's case, we were able to see that she had a fair contract. Mm -hmm. uh, but not every art got a fair contract. And the reason why Jude was able to comfortably release the, uh, the contract was because it was fair. And it was also more fair because he didn't write it. She did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know those were those were things to consider, but I, I know that there are other situations where the label breached contract terms, didn't provide what they promised, uh, and so you know, those cases are also there. Not mm -hmm. I'm not saying the labels are not to blame, yeah. But I think that the reason why contracts are, are brought together, and this is what artists understand, a contract is not about trust. Trust is earned. You build that over time. Okay. A contract of clarity. The contract says, these are your responsibilities. These are my responsibilities. Yeah. And this is how, if the of us follow through with these responsibilities, we will do a great work and do great things together. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, when you breach the contract, you've affected how successful we could be, which is why people sue. So I think, I think, when people talk about contract terms, it is important. Yes, yes, you're afraid that you don't have a lawyer. But I think you can also negotiate terms of the contract to say, look, I have a lawyer. He's charging me 100000 to review the contract. Yeah. Can that be added as an expense on my document? So the label pays, and I pay it off as recoupable. These are all conversations you can have. I've, I've negotiated contracts with even international labels where the legal fees were negotiated into the deal so i don't have to pay those fields back mm -hmm. right so instead of paying me x amount you deduct the legal fee and pay that balance but i don't pay you that money as a so i mean the negotiations you have which is why you need the manager that knows what they're doing mm -hmm. now because uh, a lot of times people are sentimental when it comes to these kind of situations they feel ah this artist was a young boy who had nothing we took him out of the streets we made him who he is and now it's time for him to, uh, to, to, to pay back because it's like an investment that was made and we expect him to pay back and the conversations now change. Now, we have a lot of artists who sign recording deals that will last for five years, eight years. Would you advise signing? How, what's the longest uh, time or, t or term you would advise a, an artist to sign a recording contract? How long do you think is the best time for Nigeria now? We're using the Nigeria as case study. What would you say is yeah. the longest time an artist can sign a record label deal and still come out and be relevant in the industry? To be fair, mm. I would say three years with, an, with a possible extension of two years. And the reason why you extend is if I'm spending 30 million or 40, 50 million on your career, yes. I need to recoup my money plus some interest. True. Right. So if if I've not recouped my money in three years, do you think it's fair for you to just walk away? Mm. You know, so these are questions that we need to be able to answer honestly. Um, the artist who comes into a career from nowhere, like no money, no. Yes, you have talent. But if these people didn't invest, they took a risk. There are people yeah. who I've seen who have contacted me for sessions to say, look, we want we want your advice. We've spent. 20 million, 30 million, and our artist hasn't gone anywhere. Um, those things do happen. And if when it happens like that, you have to be honest, it's a risk. So everybody who says I'm investing money in an artist is taking that risk. So as an artist, you want to ensure that you're giving them the benefit of the doubt that, look, if you don't make your money, I, I'm willing to do the work so you make your money. Most artists sign deals and then leave the lifestyle and forget about the work. The work. So these are all things to consider as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there's, there's also been arguments regarding how uh, much uh, the label requests from the, from the artist. Now, you can say that in a, they will tell you in a space of um, two years, we want you to release uh, three albums or two albums. 
you know, and or in the space of one year, want to have like one month, every, one song every month. So it's the, the, the artists are also uh, complaining or saying that the, the record labels sometimes they ask for things that are unbelievable. You know, seeing the fact that we are in looking at the current situation of the country, seeing how music is being accepted and all that, you expect an artist to give you two albums in two years. And, you know, with other um, singles that they've dropped and collaborations they've had, but sometimes the artists cry out for the, the, the kind of things requested from the label because of how much they've invested in them. It's, it's unbearable. It's almost unbelievable. How, um, how would you say an artist can handle situations like this and, you know, still um, um, have a good relationship with the record label? Well, I think the first thing is you start with your contract negotiation. If, you're, if you don't think you can deliver, you need to communicate that at the start of the relationship. So okay. the label now decides if this person is a lazy person for their, for, as far as their perspective is concerned, yeah. or if they're willing to risk it with, with, with this individual. Um, there's, there's, a, there's that. And then the second thing is when artists understand the value of catalogs, they might stop having this argument. Okay. Music is like real estate. Intellectual property, property is like real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the more of it you have, the richer you are. Now, you may not necessarily, it's just like living in a particular part of Lagos. At a particular point in time, it's not valuable as valuable as you hope it will be, yeah. but you buy it because you're hoping that that place will develop. It's the same thing with music. When you create content and you build catalogs, the day you have that hit song, what happens to your career is you then have ripple effects. Mm -hmm. So one song blows up and people begin to identify songs or recognize songs you've done two years ago, True. three years ago, True. and they find it. And that now increases your revenue stream. So those are things people fail to understand. I think there's a level of laziness your primary job as an artist, sometimes people get at, um, what's it called? Writer's block or they're stuck. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that is your job. If the label doesn't put the funding down, they've breached terms of the contract. If you don't make music, you've breached. And if you don't think you can deliver the volume of music they want, communicate that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, it's been a very, very insightful conversation. But I would like to ask this final question before you leave us. Uh, there's, uh, there's been an argument with how much a manager should collect from the artist or how much in, in percentage and all that. Or the record label, the amount of money they get, the percentage they get out of the fundings that come in and as to what the artist would get. Uh, it's, it's, it's a conversation that has always been going on and people are still arguing that. If the artist is the one saying, singing the song, why can't he take 50-50? You understand? Why can't, if the artist is in no day, the record label feel no blue. You know, these are these conversations from outside, you know, from, from the uh, people who are just consuming the music from outside. So yeah. for someone who has been in this industry for quite some time and you, you, you understand the business from behind, from, from the, the scenes we don't see, what would you say is the... A uh, reasonable uh, breakdown of how much the label would get, how much the artist would get. We even heard sometimes that the artist would, if the artist brings his manager on board, he pays his manager. Or if the record label gives him a, a manager, he also pays the manager. So how does that work? How would you say is the the the, the reasonable way? I, you know, a, a, around it. Oh, I think we're having a small. T okay, I, can you hear me, sir? Okay. 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 Um, if uh, I think we're having a slight network issue, but if you can hear me, you can. Okay. Can you hear me now? Did you get my question? Yes, I got okay, it. Okay. Okay. So please go ahead. Um, would like to um, let's settle this matter once and for all. So two things people need to understand: flexibility is important because um, the second thing, which is there is no fixed. Stop copying and pasting contracts. True. That's okay. what most people are doing. Have discussions with the artist, be clear on terms, and based on those terms, create a contract. Okay. Because every contract should be as peculiar as the relationship and the people that get into it. Now, um, most labels, there are different reasons why they, why they collect the percentages they collect. Some people want to recoup their money early. Mm -hmm. right? There are artists who are even willing to pay off money quickly. So they will tell you, look, if you put X amount of money in, 
I'm willing to give you 70% back until you recoup. When yeah. you recoup, we will then go to, we will then reverse it to, to 60, 40 or 70, 40 in my, yeah. 70, 30 in my favor. In favor yeah. And then you can, you can take the rest as recouping your money. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's really about understanding to both people agreeing. Mm. With regards to managers, normally, I, the, I think the highest I've heard is about 5%. Unless, unless the person who comes to manage you is uh, also your investor. In that case, we need to clarify the, the conflict of interest there mm -hmm. and ensure are you earning money as an investor or are you earning money as the manager? Yeah. Even if you're doing the role of, playing the role of manager, you need to recognize if you're taking 50% it's because you're an investor. So I'm paying you that money as investor and manager. Those things need to be clear. Mm -hmm. um, what is safe? Um, you know, I teach my students, so I don't hide about percentages I charge. Um, what I do is I try to create a flexible system. So if I bring business, I take a particular percentage. If the business comes from the artist, I give the artist a percentage of my earnings. Okay. So if my earning is, if my percentage is 20%, if the artist brings business, I pay the artist 5% for bringing business outside his own 80%. Yeah. If there's a third party that comes in and says, I want to earn 10% from the business I bring in, I take 10%. Okay. So okay. that way, the, art, the artist earns at least 80% at any given point in time. Hmm. So that's how I do it. But I, I, I think there's no one way to do it. Once you guys agree, the dynamics, as I said, if the person has an investor, he can take more. So it depends on the dynamics of the relationship. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Goddington, for this very, very insightful conversation. And I believe that as uh, people were watching, those uh, young aspiring artists who want to, you know, rush and get into recording deals, I'm sure they will look at all these things and, you know, see what uh, they need to put into consideration first before they jump in. Now, uh, final words now. Uh, would you advise every growing young artist to look out for a record label to help boost their career or would you advise them to build up their career to a certain level before looking for a record label what do you what would you say in any in any negotiation you want you need leverage okay and right now artists have all the tools they need to build leverage mm -hmm. so whether it is building your social media engagement uh creating conversions yourself selling your music yourself all those tools are available you have platforms where you can distribute your music to major uh, music platforms by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, ways to reach your audience yourself. It's just putting in the work. When you put in the work and you have these conversations with labels, you are in a better position to get better deals. True. It's one thing if you, if you bring in an audience and when you bring in, when the label has to build the audience for you, they're going to take more. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Golden Tom, for this conversation. Thank, thank you for, for having me. All right. Thank you.